tubeless tires. What is tubeless? Tubeless is <coughs> a tire that does not have a tube in it. Instead of a tube, it has sealant and a sealed rim that does not allow the sealant or the air to escape through either the nipple holes or the bead of the tire where it seats into the rim. So, these are Maxxis. I have a Maxxis Aspen on the front. This is a brand new tire. I just mounted on this rim probably two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. It has been in one race. You can see the damage from that race on the sidewall. But I can tell you right now, it's lost zero air. I actually have it pumped up to road pressure right now. Anytime you see a wet spot like this, this is somewhere the sealant has came through and sealed up what wouldn't have been a puncture. So this tire is completely fine. If it would have had a tube in it, any of these things that you see could have been and would have been definitely um, a flat tire. Would have stopped me in the race, I would have had to pull off the tube and replaced it. So, on the back again, I'm running, I run a lot of Maxxis tires. This is a Crossmark 2, um, run the 2.5 in the back. This EXO, okay, if you're buying Maxxis tires, and the TR stands for tubeless ready, if you're buying Maxxis tires, I strongly suggest, and with the race casings, they're always a lower profile, okay, less rolling resistance, and they're usually a harder compound, all right? And then over here you see this ardent race on front and back on this, a 3.5 in the front, a 2.5 in the rear. And again, you can see this has been through several races. Again, only a couple months old, but this tire has seen some, some stuff. But again, holding air just fine. Plenty of tread life left. When it comes to the tread, I mean, it's hardly even broke in. But you'll find on most mountain bikes, tires nowadays, you're going you're gonna to blow out the casings long before you wear out the tread. But definitely, I suggest if you're doing Maxxis, go with the EXO protection, um, at least on these cross-country race-style tires. On the downhills tires, I would definitely go for the Double Down. Uh, it's amazing. The Double Down is bulletproof. Um, but it's very heavy. You know, a double down tire is probably three times heavier than an XO tire. So, um, I do want to point out, let's see, on one of these bikes, oh, on this one here. When I ordered these, even though they're both hardened race, you order each tire separately, right? Especially if you're running different sizes, I always run a narrower one on the rear. Um, I did not. See, we got the 3C for the three compounds, that means that this rubber has three different compounds in it. Okay, the max speed means that it's hard uh, and, and rolls fast. It's not as soft and as grippy. Okay, max grip would be a very soft tire, very grippy tire, good for rocks and stuff, but it will roll, uh, have, will have, uh, roll slower and have more resistance because there's obviously going to be a taller profile to, to make that grip. And again, the TR just means tubeless ready. Um, but you'll notice there's no EXO on this tire, okay? This tire does not have the EXO casing. And you'll also notice that this tire is seeping, right? It's the same age as that front tire I just showed you. And yes, it's very, very worn already. Um, it is seeping out. Let's see if I can get close enough here. It's seeping out tire zone. See that? This tire looks like it's soaking wet all the time. I'll take you around real here. Look. Look at those beads. Focus. Feel free to focus. There you go. All those little white marks are beads of sealant. They're actually weeping through the tire. You also notice that you can see the casing pattern. I mean, this is just a very, very, very light tire but a very thin casing and not very good. You know, we race it in Bend, Oregon and places that have lava rock. Um, you don't want something that weak, no matter how light it is. That's a good size hole right there, right? 
But even with this compromised casing, I mean, look at all that. That's all sealant being pressed out because I'm running about 30 pounds front and back right now because I've been riding this on the road uh, for pre-race practice. Look at all that. That's all sealant. And 30 pounds may not sound like much for people who run tubes, but running tubeless, that's a lot of pressure. Um, I've ran tires clear down into the high teens, um, off-road on trails without any issues. So, again, I just, one more time, I want to show you. That is sealant weeping through a very thin casing wall. Alright, but, just want to point out, been running tires, tubeless tires for a year. No flats on the trail, no flats on races. The last time I had a flat was on a road bike, running the tube, and um, it popped a hole in three different places on the tube, it was completely unrepairable. I had to walk home and had to get a ride home on top of that because I couldn't walk in my road cleats because it was killing my feet and ruining my cleats. And uh, there's a lot of different sealants, tons of different sealant brands, and it seems to be more and more coming out every day. A lot of people are talking about the orange seal a lot right now. I don't know what type of sealant this is. This came on this tire that came on the Santa Cruz Tallboy from the factory. And, uh, well, the factory didn't make it tubeless. The bike shop did uh, Life Cycle and Eugene. But, um, again, it's an EXO tire. This is a DHF. They usually run as a front tire. A lot of people run these front and rear on downhill bikes and trail bikes. It's an excellent, excellent tire. Um, really tall treads. Good winter tire, not something I would race, too much resistance, but again, just a really good, uh, you know, really good tire. Super, super good. Um, but, uh, yeah, that gray stuff, I don't know what kind of sealant that is, but I can tell you, if you look right there, look what that stuff turns into. I'm having problems getting this thing to focus, but um, this turns into some kind of goo. Latex goo, but... Uh, Anyways, and I have other tubeless tires, these are Continentals. Um, but the sealant that I run is uh, good old stands, no tubes, uh, tire sealant. I have actually switched over to the race sealant. Um, I just swear by this stuff, it's, it's amazing. It obviously comes out in that white that you've seen in the tire there. And uh, what I, the reason I have this little bottle, and you can get these from any bike shop, or you can order them. This is exactly two ounces. And if you're topping off a wheel or a tire after like six, eight months, and you just need to put some more sealant in it, it you just take that, you shake those up, put it in here, shake it up some more, and uh, remove your valve core. All right. And uh, I try to, try to run these caps. This cap came with these other stems on that other bike, but... What this cap does is a, is a wrench, too. See that? And the wrench will take off this valve core. It'll pull this core right after you drop it. Okay. <laughs> You'll put it on here like so and turn it, and it'll remove the core from the stem. And um, anyways, and then once that's out, you'll spin it down to the bottom here. You will take your, your sealant, you would pour it, put it, you know, plug it, plug the tip of this into that, and um, and just give it a squeeze, and soon you'd have your two ounces in there. So um, that's why I keep that little bottle. It's just an easy way. Now there is uh, there is syringes. There's one right there that you can shoot in. That's actually a bike. I think that's a brake bleeder that I transformed into a, a no tubes sealant injector but I've since switched to the bottles these are the E13 stems that this cap originally came with um, I tend to run without caps a lot of the time because you don't really need them and I replaced my stems quite a bit anyways I've had these on two different sets of wheels um, I think they were $30 well worth it really really good just kind of long you know so there's more chance of something catching on or doing whatever but the length of that gives your pump out here, gives your pump a little bit of room too. But uh, I do like the shorterness of these, even though these are brass and they are going to be heavier than the aluminum. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, that's a little bit about tubeless, a um, little bit about Maxis, a little bit about uh, stands. No tube sealant and, um, you know, no, no one paid me for any of this, but it's what I use and it's what works.